Hello everyone, this is Ren, owner and designer of Blessing by Design. I'm here today to finally record the last part of my release of Good Notes 5 series. I am so excited about this. The developers for Good Notes have finally released all the features that I was waiting for, and I'm so excited to bring this video to you guys today. And I'm going to be going over the features that I find most useful and my favorite improvements from GoodNotes 4. Now let's get into the video. So here it is, GoodNotes 5 finally fully released and has all the features that have been promised to us by the developers. It's been a long time waiting, but in my opinion, it is totally worth it. GoodNotes 5 is a major step up from GoodNotes 4. First of all, I thought GoodNotes 4 had a pretty good interface, but this is so much better. GoodNotes 5 improves on a lot of the problems that I saw in GoodNotes 4. It makes everything much easier to use, much more efficient. It's just all around a much better app. So first of all, a lot of the tools got revamped and updated in GoodNotes 5. First of all, as you can see here, the, I need to connect to my pin to my iPad. Okay, so now we're ready to get started. First of all, the pin was one of the tools that got an upgrade. First of all, it has three different options for writing now. It's got a fountain pen, a ball pen, and a brush pen. Now, these are quite different from each other, actually. Um, I think previously in GoodNotes 4, you only had fountain pen and ball pen, but if you haven't seen GoodNotes 4 before, then that's okay. GoodNotes 5, I think, added only the brush pen. And the fountain pen, as you can see in this little sample I drew you guys, this is going up really light and then down pretty hard and back up light again. So as you can see, the fountain pen has a little bit of variation. The ball pen, however, has absolutely none. It's it's just a straight pen. And the brush pen is, of course, a brush pen if you've seen any of the videos here on YouTube of calligraphers. This is what they use. So as you can see, there is a ton of variation, which I prefer not to use brush pen, the brush pen for writing because of this, because it, it gets very, it gets very chunky, as you can see. The pen also got some major usability upgrades. First of all, you're, they have, of course, the custom colors that was in GoodNotes 4, but now in GoodNotes 5, you are able to put up here on the top, I would say your three most used colors or really just any colors that you want. I prefer to put my three most used colors while I'm note taking. Also, they allow you to have three different sizes as well as a slider for any size that you want. You can change it to whatever size you want. Now I need to put this back. Hopefully in a later video, I'll be able to go over um, my current note-taking system, different colors, different sizes, what they're used for, um, and what method I use for note-taking. Next up here on the list, we have the eraser tool, which each of these tools has a context-aware menu, which means that it changes for each tool. So like for the pen tool, it has the colors and the sizes of pens. The eraser, it has a different color, uh, different colors. <laughs> it has the different sizes of erasers. So these are the three default sizes of eraser. I just usually keep it on this one because you can literally just zoom in to make it smaller. And then moving on to the highlighter tool, the highlighter tool also got a pretty big update. As you can see, it also has the three size, it has the three colors, also the three sizes, which you can customize to whatever size you want. Again, I have three sizes that I use for my note taking. Also, as somebody who uses highlighters a lot, with note taking, I kind of have a pet peeve of wiggly highlighter lines, if that makes sense. So when they're not straight, which of course I draw a straight one right off the bat. So let's say, let's say it's ultra wiggly. Um, that that's distracting to me. Um, literally when I was using just paper for notes, I would use a ruler and carefully draw out a straight line. But in GoodNotes 4, I was really excited about the ability 
to draw to use the highlighter tool. But if you wanted to draw the highlighter in a straight line, you had to also select the shape tool, which is has a different purpose now because the highlighter tool now has an option for it to always draw in a straight line, which is just awesome. So now if you have that option selected, every time you draw a highlighter, it will always be in a straight line. So next up on the bar, we have here the shape tool. Now the shape tool wasn't really that useful in GoodNotes 4. I mean, it had a use, but it was a very uh, narrow use. It could only draw shapes. But in GoodNotes 4, it can only draw shapes. <laughs> but in this case, it can, you can have different options of what you want the shape to be drawn in. Like I have some uh, samples here of a circle drawn in the fountain pen, the ball pen, and the brush pen. So you can get a lot of different looks. Also, as you may be able to see, there's kind of like this grayed out area. That's because now the shape tool allows you to have a fill color. Now, I haven't really found out a way before you draw to uh, make a circle change to fill color. I'm assuming it's the same color as the uh, pen itself. But if you want the fill color to be a different color than the pen, you just select it like handwriting and change and change the color to whatever you want. Now, of course, it's, it's, it's a pretty transparent fill, but that's okay. So the shape tool got a pretty much, uh, a pretty big overhaul. Um, it has the same options as the pen tool. Um, so if you wanted to do it in one of your, one of your colors that you use for note taking, that's, that's available too. And it also carries over to the pen. So next up on the list, the lasso tool is the exact same as it was in GoodNotes 4 because the lasso tool in GoodNotes 4 was very good. So it's okay that they left it exactly the way it is. Next up, we have the image tool, which was pretty much non-existent in GoodNotes 4. For GoodNotes 4, you have to go up to one of these drop-down menus to add an image to your document. Now it's got kind of a carousel of your camera roll and you're able to resize it as normal, but the main difference between GoodNotes 5 and GoodNotes 4 camera tool, it's got this carousel, which makes it much easier to get an image. Camera tool is pretty much the same. Text tool, also big difference. It allows you to have three colors that you use a lot. Um, I will usually just have black, white, and red. I won't really have any other colors. Also, it has easy access to changing whether bold or italics. Also, in this drop-down menu, it gives a whole bunch of options for you for uh, your text. You can do uh, left justified, right justified, or center. You can change the font size. You can change the font itself, which has a much bigger uh, selection of fonts. These are all your system fonts that come on your iPad. And any fonts that you may have installed on your iPad, like this one, I actually installed this font on my iPad. You can also change the background color, the border color, the border size, uh, which kind of makes a, like a line around the box of the text. Uh, the padding is if you've ever seen a text in GoodNotes, you'll see that when you're close up on it, you can see this kind of little box um, by changing the padding, which you actually have to have it selected. By changing the padding, it will actually make, you can see that box getting bigger. Um, also the border, you can have it have, make it have a border, the border color, you can change the border. And as you can see here, it's got um, a blue border around it now. And you can also save your font and box as a default. Now, I don't want to save this as a default for my notes because I have it set up the way I want it to be set up. But yeah, the text tool has had a lot of changes. It now allows you to select the color of the text before you even start typing. Also, it comes with a rainbow of selection colors already. Also, up here at the top, a lot of these options were originally hidden in drop down menus like this one but some of them have been moved out into the open. 
Like for example, searching used to be in a drop down menu. Bookmark, I think was out all the time. Sharing used to be in a drop down menu. And over here, this is where you go into a uh, reading mode, into annotating mode. You're switching whether you're writing or just reading. Also, copying and pasting pages has been so much easier now in GoodNotes 4. I mean, GoodNotes 5. It's so much easier in GoodNotes 5 now, which is especially good for all of you digital planners out there, um, where you're able to copy your page much more easily than in GoodNotes 4. Four, and you're able to paste pages so much easier and so much quicker without having to go into the waffle itself as before. Also in GoodNotes 5, which is really useful, is that you're now allowed a split screen. So if you have your plans on this side or your schedule on this side and your planner on the side or vice, vice versa, now you're able to have a split screen of your notes. So now let's go ahead and go out to the library. Okay, so the library got a really big update in GoodNotes 5. Um, GoodNotes 5 has infinite tiers of folders, which is really useful for students. This is opposed to the only two tier system that was in GoodNotes 4. Very big and very useful update. Um, also, the search bar is very useful um, for finding documents. Um, also, if you have a bunch of folders that you access a lot and you don't want to go tapping around in the library every time you need it, you can favorite a folder and it'll show up in this favorites tab where all your favorite folders are. The settings is pretty much the same from GoodNotes 4. Um, this is where you're able to set up iCloud backup, which now also they have allowed you to do a backup of to a different cloud storage. Um, this also is this is also where you can add um, your own note taking templates. Hopefully, there's an upcoming video of my note taking templates and ones that I've added to GoodNotes for my note taking. Next up is this new box. This allows you to create a new notebook, a new folder. You can put an image in there or you can scan a document. You can take a photo, import a document or a quick note. I've actually used the quick note quite a bit and it's very useful. Like if you're in a lecture and you forgot to set up a notebook, you can just go into the library, double tap, um, double tap and it'll make a new document for you really super fast. And it'll save it as a draft and you can save it give it a name and all that good stuff. Also added feature to GoodNotes 5 is the ability to scan a document, which I'm going to try scan the sticky note. And you can't see it. So hold on a second. So it'll scan the document and you can save it, can scan multiple documents multiple pages in a document and it'll import it directly into GoodNotes and it'll try and um, identify text and put it on a white background, which is really useful because as you can see, this uh, post-it note is blue. So it's very useful, very handy. So those are all the features in GoodNotes 5 that have been added in GoodNotes 5 that I found really useful and really big improvements from GoodNotes 4. All these features are just some of the improvements GoodNotes 5 has made off of GoodNotes 4. All in all, I'm really excited about the improvements that the developers have made to the app. It is definitely a really big step up from GoodNotes 4. But thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you soon. Bye.